Welcome to a new episode of the Stick and Move podcast. I'm your host, Trey, here with my homeboy, Sam. And today we are doing our top three most fastest fighters of all time. Uh, brought to you by one of our uh, followers here called Michael Redman, at Michael Redman. So we are doing this in honor of our uh, one of our viewers, our subscribers. So you guys subscribe. Go ahead, go ahead and give us some... Uh, uh topic ideas and we will definitely shout you guys out so michael redmond this one's for you and of course our boxing fans so we are doing top three fastest boxers ever so sam punch me in the face what is your number three and why okay my my number three my number three fast look there's gonna there's a whole bunch of them guys of course but of the, course. The, there's a whole bunch of them so you know but these are my top three from my generation. I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. Okay, talk to me. My number three is Manny Pacquiao. Manny, Manny Pacquiao is, is, I mean, his speed, his speed, his footwork, but mainly his speed, bro. And I don't have to say much about it. You hear it from his opponents. Mm-hmm. When they mm-hmm. when they when they interview opponents like Tim Bradley and Mosley and 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 I think it, uh, um, uh, Bam, uh, I forgot his, his 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 last name, but he's in he's with Robert Garcia. Uh, uh, Rios. It, yeah, Bam Rios. Brandon Rios. Uh, yeah, yeah, Brandon Rios. Yes, right. And and um, I think it was David Diaz too. They'll all tell you, bro, that his speed. Is out of this world, man. Right. You know, it, Brandon Rios was w- w- commented and said it felt like I was like there was eight arms, eight punches coming at me. You know, like an octopus. David Diaz said the same thing when Manny Pacquiao shadow boxes, bro. His hand speed, bro, is one of the fastest I've ever seen. Right. You know, right. and um. I got Manny Pacquiao as my number three fastest boxer in my generation, and 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 I haven't seen anybody fashion him since. And I'll look, leave it at that. Yeah, bro. I mean, look, Manny Pacquiao, bro. In this generation, he changed boxing, bro. He was what everybody was looking for. And yes, I'm going to go there with the whole Floyd May. I don't know who knows. Floyd Mayweather might be on your list. Might be on mine, but. What made Manny Pacquiao have that that lure was the fact that he was a complete contrast to Mayweather, where Mayweather was so defensive, right? And he yeah. had that quick Cobra jab, counterpunch, parry jab that Mayweather had. But yet here was this this Filipino boxer, five foot four, if you're generous, right? Five foot five, just if you're gonna be generous about his height. This guy that had calves the size of bowling balls hitting with speed and power. And what do they say kills in all sports, whether it's football, baseball, basketball? If you have speed and power, you have an advantage. Speed kills. Speed Mm -hmm. kills, bro. And you just saw the way. and, And it wasn't everything. Even his defense was quick. So I don't mind you having him, your number three, because I honestly think he was that perfect perfect yin and yang to Mayweather because Mayweather, he brought a certain style, whether you loved it or hate it, or you whether you thought it was boring or not. And Pacquiao, every single fight, you knew you were going to see lightning, and that's what he was. Mm-hmm. He was lightning and thunder. So I'm cool yeah. with your number three pick. Go ahead. So who is your number three? Okay, so I'm going back a little bit, and it was a little bit before my time. I was a little too young to watch him, but I remember seeing like 20, 25 years ago just a bunch of VHS tapes. For our audience, I know what a VHS is. It's a cassette tape about an inch thick and six inches wide. Anyways, long. And just watching a bunch of his fights. Hey, guys, Trey here. 
If you love today's controversial episode and you want to see our channel grow, please drop a like, subscribe, and also comment. Sam and I are always going back and forth with those commenters on our controversial topics and opinions, and we love it so much. So go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe, most importantly, so our channel can grow and we can give you guys the best content as possible. Sam and I were always uploading multiple videos a week, and we want to continue doing that, and we need your help. So go ahead and subscribe, guys. And most importantly, like I always say, don't forget to stick and move, baby. And I'm going to go with Salvador Sanchez, bro. Mm -hmm. Okay. His combinations, not only was he a great headhunter, but I loved the way that he would go to the body and destroy boxers. He had this great, fantastic slide move where he would go in and out and just throw all these flurries in punches and bunches. And when he would fight bo boxers all the way from, what was it, Azuma Nelson, this last fight before his, his, uh, his death, unfortunately, that fight right there, Azuma Nelson was by far the superior, more athletic athlete. And yes, Salvador Sanchez, was peppering him to death. What you saw from the first round all the way to the 12th round, he was always going the same speed. His head-to-head -head combinations, his way to slide in and out on the body combos was, to me, epic and legendary. If I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken, I think he had, what, 12 or 10 or 11 uh, title defenses. Mm -hmm. Man, imagine if he didn't have his, his accident prematurely. I mean, yeah. what do you think that how far do you think he could have gone because nobody was competing with them at that level i mean he beat wilfredo gomez he beat uh was it La, uh laporte laporte right uh there yeah. was also castillo uh, danny patrick danny lopez danny, danny lopez. lopez patrick mm -hmm. pat ford i mean these guys were monsters in that division and he was just rolling right through all of them my man i mean who knows what that future would have been? I think uh, eventually Chavez would have been in that mix. I mean, Chavez was a class heavier than him. But you know Mexican boxers, bro. They would have eventually had had met in the middle somewhere or somebody would have jumped up or down to fight each other. But we were robbed from a boxer, bro, who was not only quick with his, fat, with his hands, but his foot movement, his head movement, and his body movement was to me almost well i guess third to none but unbelievably second to none and I, that's why i have on my number three go ahead all right no yeah i agree 100 percent. i mean he threw uh, punches in bunches bro yeah bro. and you know yeah. i mean the guy the guy had he i mean he had reach he had speed he, mm -hmm. i mean both had power in both hands yeah, right. I got to see those fights also. So I respect yeah. that number three spot, man. I'll say this too. I mean, he was so he was up and coming so much. Even Don King promoted him. So Don King wanted to get his hands on him and make him what he was, you know, what he made Chavez. And Chavez, you can argue, was probably the second most pop popular boxer of the 80s and 90s or late 80s and early 90s. Um but, I mean, who knows? We got robbed, bro. I mean, we got robbed of somebody that could have been in that, that Mount Rushmore top three, top five greatest boxers of all time. But probably, I'll leave yeah, it at probably, that. probably even ahead. bigger than Chavez. Probably even bigger than for, Chavez. For sure. I, for, he is, I don't know, man. I mean, let me ask you this, a little bit off topic. What legacy would you want? Would you want Chavez's legacy or Salvador Sanchez's? legacy you know of course not dying but you know what i'm saying like what legacy do you think is more influential you and i coming from a mexican culture what do you think it has to be the chavez man because we didn't get to see enough of talor sanchez bro yeah but sanchez he he has crossed race he has crossed cultures he has crossed languages i mean chavez don't get me wrong i love chavez i rated him my number one greatest mexican boxer but Salvador Sanchez, man, I mean, his death really magnified his greatness. And I think the YouTube era has really propelled his greatness, has given him a rebirth after death. But that's just my opinion. All right. So give me your number two. Go ahead. 
My number two is Sugar Ray Leonard, bro. Ooh, my you, number bro. two, he, dude, man, I saw him as a kid, bro. And let me tell you, Sugar Ray Leonard, bro, when he would throw in the flurries with anybody that he's fighting, bro, his hand speed was out of this world, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, dude, I remember there was moments in the fight. I don't know if it was uh, the Hearns fight, even the Hagler fight, even the Venitas fight, even the, the Duran fight. Bro, the, he would land like 10, 12 punches by the time his opponent would land one, bro. Yeah. he His hand speed was so fast, bro, that he had time to dance and swing his right arm up, you know, all around. And the windmill. Shoot the, le- the windmill and just shoot the left hand. Whatever. I mean, that dude had speed, bro. Right, right. He and, and I remember my dad telling me, my dad was a huge Zoram fan, and I remember my dad telling me, man, he hit so fast, bro, that there's punches you can't even see. Right, right. I right. mean, the guy just, Sugar Ray Leonard, for me, was one of the fastest boxers i've ever seen in my life in any era mm. any era he mm-hmm. was a, one of the fastest boxers i've ever seen in my life bro his hand speed was just was just second to none bro he he he, he, he was just stupid speed bro i mean i don't know what else to say about sugar ray but i loved his hand speed man you know what one aspect that doesn't get talked about with Sugar Ray Leonard is he brought in Hollywood, bro. You know what I'm saying? I remember watching his fights and seeing like Hollywood celebrities at his fights. You know what I'm saying? I don't remember seeing that. I don't think Muhammad Ali really did that. I know I know Joe Frazier did that to an extent. He had that Hollywood pool. But Sugar Ray Leonard, you saw uh, Nicholson at the fights. You saw Michelle Pfeiffer at the fights. Yeah. You saw... All these great celebrities, Milton Burrow. I know we're aging ourselves there. All these great people, celebrities at his fights. And it was part of it. He had that golden smile. And and to be honest with you, bro, like that speed you're talking about was, was magnetic, bro. It just brought yeah, people yeah. to the TV. They wanted to see this guy, this little guy fight. And that's what he brought, bro. So it was, cool it, 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 yeah, it, it was magic, bro. It was when he would come and fight and people would see his hand speed. It was like you were witnessing, you know, an art. Mm. You know what I mean? Just it's, it was just greatness when that guy fought, bro. Sugar Ray Leonard, man, honestly, after all these years, I know he still gets a lot of respect and all that from a lot of fighters today. But he, he is one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world, man. I agree. And I agree and 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 uh, and there should be more stories and movies and stuff about his life. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean that guy, and he, you know, just videos that I've seen, interviews that I've seen. He seems like a really cool dude too. But that's, that's my true. number two. I'm cool with that, bro. I'm cool so, with that. I love so it. So who's your number two? I'm going to go Meldrick Taylor, my man. Mm-hmm. Now, Meldrick Taylor, for me, I remember watching him. And he came up at a time where this other athlete was dominating dominating another sport. And he reminded me of him. And that was Bo Jackson, bro. He had that physique, that stoutness, that, that built, bro, where... I to this day I don't know how Chavez was able to get to him. I know the first time they fought, Meldrick Taylor had a huge lead over him because of that athleticism, in my opinion. Um, but of course, Chavez just cracked his guard. But and we know the history on that. But dude, this is a guy after his buddy McGurk and really establishing himself. What was he a 1984 Olympic champion with uh, Pernell Whitaker, if I'm not mistaken, as well? Yeah, Mark Freeman. Yeah. Right. And, and then when he beat uh, 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 Courtney Hooper and all these great up and coming boxers, bro, it was always done by his speed. His ability to use his athleticism in the ring with those deadly, lethal combinations, it always made me think how would Bo Jackson look like as a boxer? And to me, Meldrick Taylor was that guy. 
guy was shredded from stone, man. And his his combination, his footwork, his head movement. I mean, there were times where he would hit so fast, and come in the combination of power, bro, that he also had with this with this fast and quick punches. I don't even know how other boxers even were able to stand up to to him because they were so pronounced and profound. So when I think of the fastest punchers of all time, you know, that also has to do with footwork. You got you got to have the right footwork. And his feet were always moving. And his feet and his body, man, it was a perfect combination to bring that speed and that fast pace that he was always doing in the boxing ring. And I think he's often forgotten as one of these uh, these great early on fighters, you know, when they, they start their career to, you know, eventually later on when they wither, when they wither away. But I think he needs more respect to his name. Go ahead. I had the ring. I, I don't know if anybody out there had this, but I did. That's how long I've been a fan. I had the ring magazine. And it was Meldrick Taylor, and it and if it, it, and it, and it said the fastest, fastest hands, hands in boxing. In the world. Yeah, I yeah, that. dude. Yeah. I had that ring magazine, and yeah. let me tell you something. That speed that Meldrick Taylor has, that was that was beating Chavez. Taylor that, was winning that saying. fight. Right. Taylor was, was winning that yeah. fight. Taylor was winning that fight, bro, by mm -hmm. hand speed, man. I mean, Chavez would throw. Even my dad was saying. Chavez will throw one punch. Taylor had already landed like 12, 13, 14 punches. He was that a guy, great combination boxer for sure. He, he was he was a machine gun, bro. He was a machine gun. And um and 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 dude, you gotta you you know, I understand the whole knockout. He got up though, but I understand the whole knockout. But dude, you gotta admire the man had a chin, bro. <laughs> he had a chin because yeah. he took some shots that nobody else could take. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he finally That's got funny. knocked down, but he got up. And was it controversial? Yeah, it was controversial. Mm -hmm. I have to admit it. Mm -hmm. But he, I like your number two. He is one of the fastest boxers that we've ever had, man. Uh, I'll say this about him as well, you know, with that Chavez fight. I because I remember watching that too, and dude, it was not even close, bro. You and I have talked about that Pernell Whitaker Chavez fight before. We got to do it for this podcast, but you know, there were some rounds that could have gone either way, you know, for Chavez in those earlier rounds. But dude, Meldrick Taylor was pitching a shutout into those yeah. last few rounds, and it was because exactly what you said for every punch. And they, by the way, clean, uh, 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 clean punches that Chavez was landing, bro. But like you said, every time Chavez was able to break through, Taylor was landing three or four combos right yeah. back. Yeah, which makes me <laughs> makes me respect Chavez even more. I don't even know how he even took those punches, to be honest with you. Yeah, but he did, yeah. and the rest is history. So that's yeah. why he is my number two. Go ahead. Give me your number one, my man. My number one. <laughs> this is my, my this is my number one, bro. This man right here, this guy I'm about to say his name. I'm about to say his name, bro. He would throw punches, bro, that his opponents didn't even have time to block, bro. Talk to me, brother. Talk to Dude. me. Dude. <laughs> Uh, Roy Jones Jr., bro. Right. Roy Jones Jr., dude, he could hit you from one corner of the ring, brother, and catch you off guard on the he other side. He had a great, of that. dude, he had a great sidestep, bro, for sure. Dude, Definitely. dude, Definitely. he for me, his quickness, his speed, bro, his hooks, his, everything that he threw, bro, was so fast for any opponent, bro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and um. Superman, you know, and and he went all the way up to light heavyweight, right? No, he went to heavyweight. Beat he um, went to heavyweight. Wow. Paris, if I'm not mistaken, Andy Ruiz. Uh, no, no, no. And uh, no, he beat somebody else, but he beat him. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, and and 
bro, his hand speed, bro, was different. Because mm-hmm. his hand speed, it was not just his hand speed. It was the way he flew across the ring mm. to hit you with that hook, bro. Like the way he did to James Tony. You right. know what I mean? To Bernard Hopkins. I mean, the guy was just super fast, bro. And um, he he was really exciting to watch. Everybody loves him. The guy was amazing. You know, uh, um, great personality. And, I mean, he took over. He took over boxing. He had his era, bro. He had he had his years where he 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 was the guy, to, the cash cow, the guy to watch. You know, the most loved and the most hated, all at the same time. But I his hand, for me, he, his hand speed just impressed me. He's my number one. And that's what bothered me. I think one of our first episodes ever was most overrated of all time, and a lot of those comments were always. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Um, where's that Roy Jones should have been on that list? And to wow. me, that always blew my mind. I was like, how is that even a, how can anybody, I mean, I know I I had, a, you know, I know I've, I've had some crazy picks throughout our podcast history, but to say that he's overrated, nah. are we watching the same thing, man? Like, like you said, that speed that he had, that sidestep that he had, when he would throw the combinations and step to the far right or step to the left was epic, bro. It kind of, it's almost on the same level that Muhammad Ali had where um, he could turn a boxer from the ropes. Like that's how epic uh, Roy Jones's sidestep was when it came to throwing those combinations. Phenomenal counter puncher, a quick Cobra like jab and dude, he dominated the 90s when Mike Tyson was falling apart. Remember, Mike Tyson was supposed to be the face of the 90s. But yeah. Mike Tyson fell apart, went to prison, you know, the rest is history. And Roy Jones carried the 90s along with other boxers. But, yeah, man, I'm cool with him being your number one, man. I love. And I, want, and I want to say one more thing. Another thing that I that I that that I noticed about Roy Jones is I never seen a boxer that had so much fun in the ring like he did, bro. Right, right. That right. guy was having a ball. Mm-hmm. That, that guy was that guy was having fun. He always took control of the fight, and mm-hmm. um, he made it his, bro. He made mm-hmm. it his, and he owned it. He owned the fans. He owned the ring. He owned his opponent, bro. That right. the guy was just a dominant force, man. So, anyways, who's your number one? So my number one, I battled because I didn't want to go cliche. And I was like, man, do I really want to, you know, step outside the box? So after my, but you know what? I was like, you know what? But I got to give my flowers or the flowers are due. Are due. And, you know, we'll, after the, my number one, we'll, we'll talk about who we left off. But I'm going to go with your number two, Sugar Ray Leonard, my man. Sugar no. Ray Leonard, my number two. Because exactly what you said, but I'll take it a step further. Your you number know, one. I'm sorry, my number one. Sorry. I'll take it a step further. You know, when boxers box, right? Or when I'm sorry, when boxers train, you know, it's always different from training to the actual boxing ring. Like when you see boxers train, you're always like, man, they, they look so great. They look unbeatable. They look unstoppable, especially nowadays. Well, when it was HBO and there was Showtime, you know, they always had the, the prelude like, the, like a uh, two or three weeks before the fight, how how are they training? Like they look so great, you know. And then when the boxing fight happens, one of the two guys is just like, dude, like you didn't look like that when you were training, right? Like they're just totally different person, for the worse, and sometimes the better. Dude, Sugar Ray Leonard brought his training to the ring, and let me let me let me emphasize something, bro. All that extracurricular, you say, with that windmill throwing the opposite left or the right that he would do, or him just uh, uh, doing sprints in the ring and peppering and st- coming out, doing flurries inside the ring. Dude, like, no other boxer, I, in my opinion, had that kind of courage to, like what you just said about Roy Jones, I honestly feel that Leonard had the same thing. He was having fun in 
the ring, especially when he knew he had the boxer in his hand. That's when he would show his flamboyancy, that windmill punch, that cobra jab that he had that made him such a legend. I mean, there were points, like you said, you couldn't even see his second or third or fourth uh, straight jab after or his combination jabs. That's how quick he was. You know, there's all those those legendary tells, like how fast he could go with the speed bag and the jump rope and everything. And he brought that training into the ring. He punched you like the way he was training all yeah. the time. And like the way he would punch the heavy bag. But those combinations, there's this footage of it, I'm sure, uh, of him punching the, the heavy bag. And in comparison, going into the ring, he did the same thing. He took the training into the boxing ring. And I think that's what added to his lure of being an all-time great boxer. As you said, pound for pound, one of the no. greatest of all time. And probably one of the most famous as well because of that quick Cobra-like style that he had. Yeah, I agree so 100%. So that's why I have him my number one. So let's go ahead. Who did you leave off that you wanted to, that you kind of thought about? Aaron Pryor. Aaron you know, Pryor, yeah. yeah, I, I, uh, Aaron Pryor. I think, um, Mike Tyson as a heavyweight, Shane Mosley has speed. I mean, uh, there's, there's a few more other guys, but at the top of my head is Aaron Pryor, bro. Yeah, he, yeah. the guy was just, I mean, lightning fast. The wars mm -hmm. he had with, with Arguello. Um, another guy uh, in the comment section had mentioned Johnny Tapia. Yeah, that Johnny, Johnny that, Tapia. that Johnny Tapia had a lot of speed in him too, and he I did, do re did. and I do recall he had a lot of speed. But right. I cannot I cannot ignore like Shane Mosley, bro. But you remember right. the you know the fights he had, you know with with Deloya and all that. He had top speed, bro. I he mean did. the guy was he super did. fast. How about you? Who did you leave out? I I had an old school one, and and I had a more modern one. The modern one was also Mike Tyson. His way of his of his uh, peekaboo style, his way of using all that weight and that torque and that speed to throw those hooks and uppercuts. You've never seen something so fast and powerful, in my opinion, in boxing history. That's yeah. up for debate, but I don't think that is. Uh, mm -hmm. The other one was also Willie Pep, man. That guy had a phenomenal record. That guy, I mean, the reason why he was so prolific in his boxing career, I mean, it was his speed as well as his defense. He was a master defenseman. And he used that defense and his speed and his footwork is what really translated to him being an all-time great and sadly, sadly, sadly often forgotten. And you and I, I mean, we should, we should have more conversations about Willie Pep. I know a lot of our commenters are always talking about him as well, and we appreciate that. But... Those are the two guys I left off our list, my man. Uh, yeah, so. I got one more, one more. That because I'm 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 reflecting. Um, uh, one guy that had a lot of speed uh, was Hector Camacho. Camacho, yeah. Yeah, Hector Camacho had a lot of speed in him too. I remember that. But well, yeah, he was that great. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. no I was just that... saying that 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 I remember him. I re I remember him just having so much speed in his fights, and that was part of his his um. His um, specialty was his speed, yeah. his so hand was, speed. Remember yeah. the way he would come into the ring with the, da -da -da, you know, starts throwing right. a little flurry to show the crowd, like, hey, I got some fast hands here. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, he was that great lefty, man. That great lefty with those those combinations with the, with the jabs were phenomenal, which is why we had an uh, underrated, uh, overrated episode on Chavez. The fact that he beat, that Chavez beat this guy. With that speed and that connection, just puts Travis on another level, in my opinion. But I'm cool with our list, man. Do you have any final words for our audience? No. Um, well, yeah, actually, I do. Uh, thanks, guys, for commenting. And I'm trying to, you know, give to everybody's comments. And uh, thanks for liking the video, share, subscribe, so we can continue doing all this content. And if there's any ideas y'all want us to talk about, let us know. And we'll, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it. Yeah, my man. So thank you guys for everything. Keep the comments coming. Like Sam said, just go ahead and subscribe. But most importantly, don't forget to stick and move, baby. I am the greatest. I wish I was 50 years.
Stick and move! Wait, can you understand? Stick and move!